Good morning, gorgeous ones. How are you all doing on this gloomy old Tuesday morning? If you're new to the house of Joseph, a very warm welcome to you. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Now then, guys, I'm on the hunt for, get this, Marilyn Monroe's face powder. The, the powder she used, not the very same powder because that would be way too expensive, but basically a version of Marilyn's face powder. So it does exist and you can buy it over, um, in shops, basically in England. I know you can't buy it in America. The only place you can buy it in America is Amazon. So I'm so sorry about that, guys. But um, I think they sell about 11 shades and I'll show you what it is in a minute when we get into the shop. So do you want to come with me? Let's walk and talk. So beautiful ones, it's now the next day, 24, roughly about 24 hours later, and I'm in my own flat now. So um, in, in the end, I decided not to film inside the shop, me buying the, um, the, <laughs> the amount of powder foundations or just pressed powders because there were hundreds of them and I spent ages and ages and ages choosing the right shade. And in the end, I got two. Shall I put you out of your misery and show what Marilyn Monroe's face powder was? Next fact is cream puff. Can you see that? And in the end, I got two of these, and this is going to be a full blind review on these two today. Uh, and this is in shade, uh, I got shade Translucent and I got shade Tempting Touch. And um, Translucent is obviously, it speaks for itself. It's a transparent colour, um, found um, powder, found, it, they are basically powder foundations, although they're not, if that makes sense, do you know what I mean? Um, I'll explain that a little bit later on. And the Tempting Touch one is more of a sort of pink toned um, color so so my gorgeous people before we continue and carry on and dive into the blind review today i'm going to talk to you about can you see my skin here it's looking a bit red and round here it's it's looking nasty isn't it and there are some crusts forming on my neck because i'm using a, a special cream at the moment which is prescribed for me by my gp and it's called effidex cream and the drug's name is called fluora uracel and what that does is basically it's for precancerous lesions which i've got a lot lots of all over my body um they're not cancer though, guys, please don't worry. They're the stage before cancer. My dad has them, my brother has them, and I have them. And because I've lived abroad for many, many years um, and didn't really bother with sunscreen, my bad, I know. Shall I slap my naughty, aren't I? Very, very naughty. Practice what I preach as opposed to, you know, preaching what I practice or whatever. So, um, Yep. So basically, and basically how something like Effudex cream works is that it, um, it intervenes at the, st the, the the cellular level. So the DNA, which has been damaged, which can then lead on, um, go on to cause cancer and such and such. <laughs> and such. Um, basically, all of that sun damage, what this will do is it brings it to the surface of your skin over about a, a period of a month. So you need to use this once a day for four weeks. Um, However, your skin will really, really, really nosedive, guys. I mean, I've been using this for about a fortnight now, and um, there's a one crust on there, there's another one there. Um, I have used this several times over the past two or three years, and if I can, I'll find photos and put them here to show you how hideous this stuff can actually make your skin. But once that damage is at the surface and gone, you're, you're set then, do you know what I mean? It's not a cosmetic item though, this is a prescription only medication, and I'm only using this to get rid of um, basically skin damage, which could cause skin cancer. So. Have any of you seen those special cameras which you can film yourself um, and they make you look black and white, however they show up every every trace of sun damage on your skin as a big black or dark brown blob I think it is, it's black and white so you know the contrast will show you, show you where the, the skin damage is. So say I, I was looking to the camera now and my skin looks fine doesn't it, if I put an image of my myself here using the special camera I'd have black all over my face because obviously it's sun damage is invisible to the eye isn't it, however this camera, I can't remember what it's called. If anyone knows, can you please let me know in the comments? That would be great, I'd love to hear from you all. Um, so this camera, it basically discloses areas of sun damage or a dam it's a cellular DNA, which has been harmed or damaged over the, the period of your life, basically. So my question really is, is with something like this, Effidex cream, will it remove all of those, um, you know, those those patches of dark skin damage? So if, if say I'd use this for four weeks or something, and then let my skin recover. If I went then into that, look at that camera, would my skin look just normal or would they still have black lumps? I, I just don't know, it's fascinating, isn't it? Right, man is waffling severely, okay, okay. On this old face of mine, guys, I'm currently using a KC serum or facelift in a bottle, which is one of my DIY recipes, and I'll link how to, to make that into the description. I've done two videos on that so far, the first original one and then the resouped um, or the revamped version of and this one has possibly around three or four tablespoonfuls of xanthan gum or gum arabic in it. 
And um, I think, yeah, no, I definitely added four or five little uh, uh, dispersible aspirin tablets, which is basically salicylic acid, just to give my skin, you know, that, that extra boost or that, that little bit of exfoliation. Do you know what I mean? Do you guys? I hope so. <laughs> so what do you reckon? Skin's not looking too bad at the moment. My neck is awful, though, guys. And the reason I started using that Effidex waffle approaching from all angles now, guys, I'm so sorry. But... Um, yeah, because obviously you film yourself and you're inspecting yourself on a on a regular close basis. Do you not a, a, a minute basis, I guess. Um, I'd noticed that my skin was starting to look really awful around here and around here, so that's why I started to use um, him. Oh, fuck. Stop dropping stuff. Butterfingers. <laughs> so that's why I'm using Effudex cream. So shall I drag myself away from can skin cancer? causing DNA cellular damage and all of that and how to mend that and push myself into the direction of Max Factor's cream puff. I'll do that. So beautiful ones. As I've said, this is going to be a full blind review on the Max Factor cream puff. And what, what I do is when, when I do blind reviews is it's basically um, an invention of mine to make them a little bit more interesting, a little bit more unpredictable for you beautiful ones out there. Um, and I won't go into exactly what, what I do in these because you'll soon see. If you stick with me today, then you'll see what a blind review is. Um, so without any further waffle, what I tend to do first of all is just to describe what I can see in my hand and so I've got as I said I've got two of these this one is shade translucent and this one is the tempting touch and this is slightly oh in fact it's a lot more pink to you know to obviously go with these um these Celtic old chops of mine so I'll talk about the um that one is the translucent one so can you see turn him over there I have seen quite a few videos on this, only the history of this, so um, not how it performs on the skin or anything like that, because that would defeat the purpose, really, wouldn't it, of the blind review? It certainly would. So, um, yeah, the amount of times I've walked past these in the, the drugstore or the chemist and just totally ignored them. Not ignored them, I, I have paid attention to them, and I've often thought to myself, should I try this one and should I review it for you beautiful ones out there? Um, however, for some reason, I've always boycotted them or just avoided them because... I imagine them to really, really, really powdery and chalky, um, but we will certainly try various different application methods to see if we can get the best out of this one. And this was £10 from Sainsbury's. Again, I'll link everything into the description. I believe they sell something like 11 shades. I'm not, I could see 11 shades in the shop anyway, so could be wrong there, but we'll find out when we look at the website. So, so this comes in a black and gold compact or cassette. Um, and it's one of those ones you screw off and it's got the security blessing saying because are really, really security conscious. So without any further waffle, I'll um, remove that one. This might take a bit of time, guys. I might have to speed this bit up. <laughs> he says struggling with it. Ah, no, hang on. It's coming all feeling the need for a J cloth. I better go and get a J cloth. Otherwise, this is going to end in disaster. See you in a minute. So yeah, black and gold cassette, one of those screw up ones. And on the front, it says the um, shaking again. I've had loads of cups of coffee for tea this morning totally totally overdosing on quite caffeine again my bad so <laughs> yeah no this comes in a, a, a shiny sort of faux gold um cassette with a, a gold lid black um black bottom the writing and the shade the, sorry the ingredients and the shade on the back the expiry can should have a little look at the expiry can so this lasts for 30 months which is good so and it, because it's a powder it hasn't got any water in it which means it won't breed bacteria therefore that will stay nice and fresh and on the front it says Max Factor Cream Puff uh, Press Powder since 1953. Now that isn't a Max Factor. He didn't start work in 1953. He's been around for years, probably the 1920s, even the 1930s. Um, that's when he came into his own. I believe that they're just talking about the um, the, the inception or the, the invention of this product. And of course, guys, this is the exact same um, press powder Marilyn Monroe used to achieve that flawless milky sort of skin, which, um, you know, we all want and love, don't we? But she, she didn't use this as a powder foundation. She used it simply as a setting powder. So um, I think she did anyway. Don't quote me on that. I could be well wrong there, guys. Um, yeah, but she, she, her skincare and makeup routine was really, really complex and involved. Um, there was a chap called Erno Laszlo who still is still at his products. You can still buy them today. I'll try and put some images down here. They they have like a normalizing uh, fluid, which has got alcohol in it and powders, which colored sort of powders, which once you put on your face, the alcohol evaporates, obviously, and leaves like a, a veil sort of behind um, and Ernest, Erno Laszlo actually wrote her out an entire prescription of how to look after her skin morning and evening. Um, and it was, as I said, it was really lengthy and involved. But shall I stop waffling and, yeah, crack him open? So let's just twist him up. Wow. Wow. Got a lovely smell, guys. And this hasn't got silicones in it, so we won't be able to, I don't think we're going to be able to incorporate water into the equation. 
So this is, sorry, this is shade translucent um, and we'll have a look at the tempting touch one in a minute. And in the cassette, you get a pan with the powder in it and you get a little puff. So it feels a bit plasticky actually. In fact, it doesn't feel like a sponge at all. Can you see that? I'm trying to see if it's going to shine for you guys. It's basically feels exactly the same on, on that side, a little bit shiny, a little bit more plasticky, but it certainly hasn't got that, that material sort of soft sponge sort of feel. So it just feels like a rubber, a rubber sponge, but it smells gorgeous. It's obviously perfumed, but it's not that cloying sort of, do you know what I mean? That smell that the Maybelline um, Dream Satin Liquid Hideous Stuff, the most foul smelling foundation I've ever come across in my entire life, um, smell of, but... This one reminds me of my nan. Do you know what I mean? And my nan used to use this a lot. Um, and I think that you, you, some of you out there may know what I'm talking about, but um, some of these smells evoke memories, don't they? But yeah, it's got an oil of Olay smell to it as well. And I think that oil of Olay is owned by Pocter & Gamble, the same company which owns Max Factor. Again, don't quote me on that. I could be very, very wrong there, but I'm just really perplexed by the old rubber sponge thing. It's really bothering me because I haven't got a clue what it's for. Do you know what I mean? Or how you're even supposed to use it. But that's one of the inherent um, dangers of these blind reviews because I'm probably doing this totally wrong and you'll find out you're supposed to soak this or something like... Sorry, Miss Dosh, that straightening stuff I did the other day has worked. It's caused my, you know, my whiskers to point downwards as opposed to smothering me on a daily basis. However, there's the odd stray one that's still got a life of its own, a little bit on the willful side, determined to murder me. So should I put some on to a strip down here? Let's do that. And £10, it's not that bad, really. I mean, I do find Max Factor is on the higher end of the old drugstore foundations um, or makeup. But so far, everything I reviewed by Max Factor, except for the Face Finity Concealer, which I hated with a passion. Um, but so far, everything else I've reviewed, I've really liked. So... Let's shut up, man, and get on them old faces. I've only got one face, for goodness sakes. What the <laughs> That little devil on my shoulder gets a bit confused. I mean, it's getting old, you know what I mean? It's not as, well, it is as old as me, because obviously, yeah. Okay, guys, I've just worked out how you're supposed to use this sponge. Can you see on there? <laughs> because I'm as blind as a bat, I can't see anything without my glasses on. Um, it says to peel up, so... <laughs> Typical me, eh? <laughs> no wonder it didn't work. So, yep, somehow you're supposed to peel this up. Although, how the heck are you supposed to do that? Oh, ah, right, okay. <laughs> oh dear, it's going to be one of those tutorials, isn't it, today? Or one of those blind reviews where everything that could possibly go wrong will go wrong, starting with sponge so now we have i've been applying it with the rubber side <laughs> no wonder i thought it just didn't look very well it does it still looks amazing but not very much coverage really at all so should we start again let's do that so what i'll do is just do um <clears throat> sorry about that guys remove that layer with my j cloth oh dear. <laughs> it's quite funny actually so beautiful ones once you've taken the plastic coating thing off the sponge don't say anything please not a word guy <laughs> right okay so should we try this again and that back of that hand's pretty dry now so typical eh right ah that's better it's just i just wondered why it wasn't picking up any of the product at all and it was because i hadn't removed the yeah, you saw that didn't you so again let's let's go in wow that's low and it feels really, really silky. You know, some powders, you can put them on sometimes and they, they tend to grab to your skin the second you put them on and then they don't glide, do they? This one glided on or it glid on. So that's a layer of him on the back of my arm or hand even. And can you see it's got a, a very, very, very faint sort of, and it, it, the color's just invisible on the skin. So it's definitely translucent. And wow. Yep. Loving it. And it won't last very long because obviously it hasn't got silicones in. But um, right, shall I put a layer here? Let's do that. It kicks up a quite a bit as well because it is obviously a powder. Right, okay, so this time I'm going to put it just around here. Wow, totally vanished. Put a little bit more on it. Doesn't, I don't even know whether this is build up or whether you can build up um, coverage or not. But again, fold your sponge over into a point point. 
loving the smell of this stuff. And I believe they've reformulated this once since it was created in 1952. So that pays testament to how fabulous it is. And the fact that one of the most beautiful women in the world swore by this powder, Marilyn. So now guys, I'll get some of this onto my face. Let's get quite a bit on, shower. Let's give this a fair old clack of the whip. Why not? You all okay, guys? Hope so. Right, can you see that there? And what I'll do is I'll start in with my nose and the center of my forehead and blend out because that's where we get most of our texture. Wow, it just glides on, guys. There's no pulling at all. Put a little bit more on the old um, Chinofta, shall I? Why not? And it's quite a silky sort of feel on this. Now, can you see there and there? And this is, my, this is one of the issues I have with translucent powders is they do always have a, a very slight yellow tone to them. <sighs> Don't know if it's going to pick up on camera or not, but... Um, <sighs> You imagine you applying this on top of foundation or something like that it will change the color of the foundation to a more of a yellowy sort of color and it will make it darker as well so but that's one layer of him wow very 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 soft sort of soft folk sort of look loving it absolutely loving it guys gorgeous stuff i'll um i'll go and tidy up my eyebrows and when i come back shall i take a set of photos i'll do so beautiful ones. What I've done is I've just turned my studio light off because I want you to see, can you see that area there? I don't know whether the camera's going to pick it up or not, but the translucent powder has given my skin a very, very slight yellow sort of tone, which I'm not a fan of at all. However, it has given my skin a really lovely soft, soft focus look, isn't it? It has. Okay, I'll go and put the, the light back on and then we'll look at some photos, shall we? So beautiful ones. That's one application of Max Factor's Cream Puff in translucent using the sponge provided. Once you've taken the plastic, yeah, you thought that, didn't you? Idiot, aren't I? Right, what do you reckon? As I said, the colour, it's very, very slightly too yellow, and I, it just put me off totally. I'm not going to fail it, though, because of that. But um, And I don't know what shade Marilyn used. Um, I don't even know whether they had 11 shades back in 1953 or whenever the stuff was made. Um, however, yeah, loving the fact it gives you, it doesn't give you that flat sort of chalky look. And if the formulation has remained unchanged for 70 odd years. It's amazing, isn't it? Right guys, now that ne noisy inconsiderate neighbors have buggered off and left me in in peace to film, I will um I can carry on, shall I? Just a quick tip for you guys. When you go to put this close it up, um you see that side, that's the side we applied it with. There'll be oils on that and you don't want them getting into your powder. So just to put it down for, with the the side you applied facing upwards. Can you see that? And where's the lid? Close him up. And you won't get that, you know, that shiny, waxy sort of film. A lot of powders, in fact, nearly every powder you you, you, you could try um, will do that to you. But um, right, sorry, guys, the old sponge things really perturbed me and set me off my course, set me spinning in circles. Now. <laughs> so I nearly forgot photos. So here's one of me looking out of the window into natural daylight. Very, very, very sheer and lovely. Loving this stuff, apart from the yellow. Tone. Here's me looking to the right. Here's me looking to the left. Here's one of the shot formerly known as drone. Naughty today. And finally, flash photography, guys. So what do you all think at home? For £10, it, I haven't quite made up my mind about this one yet. So should we try try the, um, shall I, do, do you want me to carry on playing with the translucent one or should I go in with Tempting Touch? I'll do that, shall I? So guys, before I slap any more of this poudre de visage onto these old chops or face powder, in other words, that Marilyn Monroe favoured, they want to see these side by side. This one is the new one, which we're going to try in a minute, the Tempting Touch. And this one is the translucent. And you can see that's got a very beige. And that's why that gave me that horrible sort of yellowy look around my nostrils and basically just turned me into a um, look, gave me a sort of a, a parchment. So I, I felt it did anyway. Perhaps it didn't. I, I don't know, really. But um, this one looks far more promising, doesn't it? Possibly a little bit too pale, but... Again, it's got that gorgeous, sort of that very, very subtle 
or oil of Ole smell or, or Ule, it used to be all of you land it used to be known because i lived in new zealand when i was a little boy um and obviously different countries they call it different things so in new zealand we knew oil of oil of Ole as oil of uland so could you let me know what, whether you remember oil of Ole when you were children or when you were growing up and what it was called in the countries let me know in the comments and i'd love to hear from you thank you so much right I have removed that layer of powder off these old chopsticks of mine. So, and this is tempting touch. Can you see, um, sorry, see that there? And as this one's a lot more cooler, uh, a lot paler too, but, um, and I don't know whether they're, the, whether the translucent one has a different sort of coverage. Um, it possibly could do, couldn't it? And the ones that have got color in them possibly could be fuller coverage or certainly give you a, a much better finish. So again, fold him over. kicks back load kicks up load so again apply some onto the back of the hand and right so that's one layer of that one and can you see it's it's certainly got a much more pink tone to it hasn't it you can see that there and there um and again it's got that gorgeous glow to it that very very subtle sort of soft um neighbors really getting on my nerves today we do get on though, do you know what I mean? I say hello to them on a daily basis when I see them in the street, but they're just so inconsiderate. They know I'm trying to film, do you know what I mean? I'm sure they're trying to wind me up, guys. That's the whole purpose in life is to wind me up, isn't it? To make noise when they know I'm trying to film. For you beautiful ones, it's so naughty of them. I'm kidding, of course I am. Right, so yeah, that looks far more promising, doesn't it, guys? And as I said, it's got that gorgeous, um, lovely, really, really liking this, so covered in powder now guys I'm gonna stand up and it's all gonna end up all over my floor but hey -ho. so again guys let's try let's see what the color match is like and again I'll put a strip of this one onto my cheek going down onto my jaw onto my neck rather sorry itchy moustache and if if it matches both of these then um wow I think we're entering entering Casper territory here guys wow Okay, liking this so far, giving my skin a very, very, can you see the the, um, the velvety sort of look it's given my skin? And when you're applying a powder, any sort of powder to your face, to your face because the hairs on, on the, I think they're called Scylla hairs or Villa hairs, something like that, you know, those little pale blonde hairs that grow downwards, it's important to go in the direction of those, so always, you know, brush downwards. I've got a few other tips for you today about um, powders too, but I'll talk to you about those once we, we get this on my old face. Should we do that? Yep, loving it. I'm just going to see whether this could cover some of that redness down there. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? So again, get a good old layer of him onto the sponge. Right. Wow. Eat your heart out, Maybelline 24 hour hybrid super stay powder foundation, which is, just looks like um, cement on the old chops. That has gone, hasn't it? They do, those two red marks were there before. Should I put a little bit more on? Wow, it's just totally, totally vanished, guys. And this is a, a silicon-free powder, so it, in fact, it's not that that sophisticated or advanced. I've, I've already studied the ingredients, and um, I mean, for that to do that, obviously, I need to go and do a, a daylight check to see whether I now look like a, a bag of flour or something like that. But um, I don't think I do, though. So. Right, guys. So, and the point behind me showing you two shades was so that we could choose the the most appropriate or the most fitting shade to the closest shade to my skin, so that we can then decide which one to play around with. And it's, I think it's going to have to be the old tempting touch. So, without any further ado, and I'll put it on this side of my face, and I'll show you my my tricks and tips on this side, if that's okay. Why not? So, again, we'll get a good layer of him on. What's the matter with people? God, they're so inconsiderate, aren't they? All know I'm trying to film. Shh, please, come on. I suppose I could just go and close my windows, couldn't I, and just to seal out all of the noise. But why should I have to, guys? I mean, come on, please. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right, so can you see that fresh amount there at the top there? So I'll start with, put that into a point so that I can wear it into the crevices of this old schnufter. Who's that? Oh, right. 
my friend's seeing a GP this morning and he keeps letting me know what number in the queue he is. <laughs> Started on at 58 and then it went down to 49. He's just messaged me to say he's 36. Bless him. So he's getting there, isn't he? <laughs> right. So I'll just tidy up Stoshi. And that area there. Can you see how grey my hair is going? Goodness me, I was watching a video yesterday from only two months ago. My hair's nearly black there. Look at it now. I do like it though. And I'm using a purple... Um, a purple, I'll show you actually, shall I, rather than me sat here trying to describe it, I'll go and get it for you and let you see how I'm actually maintaining this, this sort of ashy, sort of cool, sort of um, Scandinavian look, which is what I'm after, should I do that, I'll do that. So gorgeous ones, obviously the, the Provoke purple shampoo is the classic, isn't it, and this is the one which neutralises those brassy sort of tones, orangey sort of yellowy sort of tones in blonde hair, it will also help to neutralise yellow tones in grey hair, and it gives you that sort of that whitish sort of silvery sort of look which a lot of us are after. However, I find the Provoke one doesn't really um, give you a very solid, a very much lo long lasting or longevity of colour. So I got this one, which is called Pick and Mix Colour. This is by Superdog, Superdog's own brand. And this is in shade Violet. It's slightly redder than the um, the Provoke one, but still works just as well. And, what I, and this is a temporary hair colourant, eight to ten washes. So let's say eight or three. Three to, I'm lying again, sorry guys, compulsive liar I am, I'm not. But um, can you see there it says three to ten washes? And because I don't want it to turn my hair purple, all I wanted to do is to neutralise those brassy tones, we need to water it down. So what I do is in my hand, as I get a dollop of conditioner, this one's just a cheap old laboratory Garnier one, or just Garnier, and then I just get a dollop of this, I mix them together, apply it onto my hair, leave that then for five minutes, ten minutes, and then rinse off. Um, and if the okay, sorry, and if the colour is too intense, then you can always go in with an anti-dandruff shampoo, something like Head and Shoulders, something which is going to basically strip the colour away. So, or one of those clarifying shampoos. However, I just find it works perfectly well. So, if you want, if you've got that sort of yellowy blonde hair and you want more of an ashy sort of tone, temporary one, then go in with some of this. And this was four pounds, something like that, I think. Um, yep. So again, guys, I've got one layer of Max Factor Cream Puff in colour Tempting Touch on just the, the left-hand side of my face, which will appear right to you guys. And basically, it has disappeared into my skin, although it's left my skin looking amazing, I think, anyway. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll apply this to this side as well, exactly the same. So I've got an even layer on because I need to go and take some photos and then we'll start playing around with it. How does that sound? Let's do that. Right, so without any further waffle from Mr. Waffle himself aka me, <laughs> take glasses off because they do have a pretend propensity to tip backwards and then I lose them and do you know I've lost so many pairs of glasses over my lifetime, I have, I reckon there's a mountain of glasses somewhere with my name on, do you know what I mean, waiting for me to come and claim them all and then I could open my own shop of glasses, no, okay, no I won't, right, <laughs> right so again, central panels of choppies, and you can see how amazing the coverage is, can't you, I'm so impressed with this stuff, it's giving, as I said, it's giving Maybelline's 24 hours, right, that should do for one layer, giving Maybelline's 24 hours superstar, <laughs> state superstay powder hybrid foundation a run for its money, isn't it? It is, guys. I mean, that is just awesome. So go in with a J cloth wrapped around finger and just, you know, if you, if you do have facial hair, and I happen to be very, very proud of my beard, it took me years to grow. <laughs> It did. A friend and I were talking the other night about facial hair and how long it took took to grow. And I think I, he might have even beat me. I think his was something like eight years or something. We both dye our beards as well, but that's what it's for, isn't it, guys? Why not? So, wow, look at that sheen. And this is a 70-year-old powder, guys. Obviously, it's not the original 70-year-old powder. It's a modern version of the original formulation. But, um... Wow, can you see that's grabbed onto my silvery bits and pieces up here. So just remove him from there. Taking care not to remove any of the foundation because what the powder is just applied to this old visage of mine. But um, right, okay, wow. It's got a very clean sort of feel and a smell and that's what I love about this entire form. It's just the whole cleanliness behind it and just the fact it makes your skin look amazing as well. Look at that. Wow. For £10, guys. Come on, please. £10. You just can't go wrong, can you? Silly bugger, aren't I? 
just going to sit here and gaze at myself for the rest of my life. I think, why not? I haven't got any jobs to do or anything. Today. I've got loads to do today. Wow, so impressed. I'll go and take a set of photos, and when I come back, we'll and we'll start. Well, should we try with a? Um, might try with this one, my little old leprositic um, beauty sponge, soaked, and and it may work, it may not, but um. However, it doesn't really need to, does it? I'm so in love with this formulation. Wow, and the colour match is pretty spot on. I'll go and take a set of photos rather than admiring my face. Shall I do that? Okay, will do. Sorry, guys, I know I harp on and on and on about light, but can you see the tip of my nose, how the reflection in my nose, and that, that I've got quite a lot of powder on my nose at the minute, and it's just beautiful. It's made my skin gorgeous. Um, Right, here's a set of photos. Here's me looking straight out of the window into natural daylight. And it has started to look a little bit mask-like. Here's me looking to the right. A little bit mask-like, but I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. Here's me looking to the left. The shot formerly known as drone. Do you like that one? Made that up this morning. It's good, isn't it? Kidding. Um, and finally, flash photography. So beautiful ones. If you um, if you've applied a layer of powder onto your face and it, it, you're over the top of your foundation, or it's just starting to look a little bit mask, like a little bit chalky, and it's a powder which hasn't got silicones in, which means we can't use a, bl a beauty blender or something like that, go and get yourself a bottle of water, a spray bottle. Take your glasses off if you happen to be bespectacled like myself. Just make sure it's working. Yeah. Hold the the bottle probably around 10, 12 inches away from your face. So around here. Close your eyes and simply spritz it all over. And by doing that, and what that's going to do, guys, is it just gets rid of that, that very top layer of powder. And it, it almost helps to bond with the skin a little bit more so than if we didn't, you know, spray our water. And it just helps to take away that horrible, flat sort of powdery sort of foundation you look. I'm just trying to dry my face now. Um, where's my... I haven't got a fan in here because it, obviously it's a bit colder in England today. But um, so can you see there that, that area? That's still a little bit on the wet side, so that the water hasn't dried totally yet. But that's all that's it. That's all it is in there is tap water and a hundred ml spray bottle, and um, I sprayed possibly around five or five or six times, didn't I? Yep. And that will just transform the look. So again, you'll still have the coverage from the powder, um, but. You won't have that that chalky powdery sort of look, which I hate. Um, and some of you may like that look, although it tends to um, tends to, to make it look very very obvious and unnatural. So, wow, falling for this one big time. Can you see that area there on my forehead? And that's bone dry now. It's touch dried. So, wow. Amazing, amazing stuff. Considering this is 70, 70, how many years? 78 years, no, 75 years, something like that, 76 years old. Again, my maths aren't the best in the world, but hey, hated my maths teacher at school. She was an old dragon, a bit of an old bully as when she used to pick on me, which is why I used to play truant. No, it wasn't actually. Um, I was bullied at school, but that's not for now, is it? No, it's still not. But... Yep, loving it. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. So... What I might do now is to just um, apply with one of these ones and I'll talk to you about why I'm going to use a smaller brush in a second. So guys, that's the layer of, I'm just going to fan my face because I've just wiped all of that layer of um, powder found or cream puff off with a, a J cloth and my skin's still ever so slightly damp. So this is just a mouse mat with a cat on it. Don't know, my ex-partner got it for me, so I don't know where. I think it came from eBay, something like £3.99, but you know. Um, yeah, so that's dried now. Put him on the floor. So... Again, get your compact, and I can see why Marilyn loves this stuff. It is phenomenal. Get a flat foundation brush. And the reason we're going to use a flat foundation brush to, today, guys, as opposed to a something a little bit fluffier like um, my powder brush or even my contouring brush um, is because, and that's that's a little bit too thick and a little bit too um, fluffy for what, I, for what we need today. So you need, as I said, you need a flat foundation brush. Can you see that one? This is my double-ended concealer, one end and foundation. I got that from Superdrug, something like £3.99, £4. And it's my favourite foundation brush. I love it. Um, so again, just go in and just get a good good dollop of that one onto 
the brush. And the reason we're using a, a, a flat foundation brush is because it just offers you so much more precision. So again, I'll start on this side of these old choppies. And you can really get into the nooks and crannies because obviously that sponge is huge, isn't it? The sponge which came with the, um, the cream puff. A little bit too big for our, our requirements today. And you can get under your eyes and into your shinofter. Now, one tip I will give you guys is to never powder the end of your nose. And I know we have shiny noses, but or, or if you're going to a very, very thin. So you could get your fluffy brush then, couldn't you? And just sweep it, give it a quick swipe like that, blow off the excess and just dust the end of your nose. Because obviously the nose is the most prominent part of the face. And if that's, all chucking, chuck, yeah, sorry, if that's looking all chalky and powdery, then that would look really, really obvious. Whereas just by you know putting a very 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 small amount of powder or even none at all just boycotting your schnuffter entirely is possibly the way forwards um it tricks people into thinking you, your whole skin is perfect does that make sense hope so right so yep really really pleased with that so let's go in with a little bit more and we'll get the left side of these old choppies done shall we right so again start here because most of the pores, and I am trying to avoid my nose, you can get up possibly as close to your nose as you want to, but, you know, just um, just avoid the, the tip of your nose is my tip for today. Work some of that one into the whiskers. And you can go into your nostrils as well, or around your nostrils, because obviously I get my facial cellulite around my old nose. Just put the lid on this one. So beautiful ones. This is the uh, the final look. What do you think? Skin looks amazing, doesn't it? Just absolutely stunning. Um, and it's because of the cream puff powder and the color match is superb. I didn't like the translucent one because it you know it pulled a little bit too yellow. And I do find that with every single translucent powder, apart from those white ones. Um, but you know the, the old formulation uh, translucent powders tended to be a little bit yellower or more yellow. So um, I'll just tidy up the stash again. So today, guys, we've made a 75 or 78 year old powder. We've transformed it, haven't we? We have. Um, it just looks gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. And I can see why Marilyn loved this powder so, so much. I really, really can. It is phenomenal. As I said, that comes in 11 shades. So should we look at the website? Oh, but don't get a final set of photos and then we'll look at the website and then I'll stop talking. You'll be pleased to hear. I'm kind of, I'm kind of. So beautiful ones, here's me looking out of the, the window into natural daylight, straight on. And I just, for some reason, the, the, applying it with the foundation brush has given me a much, much more natural look. Possibly because here's me looking to the right. Possibly because I've avoided the end of my nose, or I put a very light dusting on the end of my nose. Um, here's me looking to the left. Here's me holding the camera above my head. Here's me murdering neighbours for being so noisy. <laughs> I'm kidding. <clears throat> wow, that's amazing. Sorry. And finally, flash photography. I'm getting that silly grin again I get every time I fall in love with a new product, aren't I? Sad, I know, but hey, come on. It doesn't take a lot to please me, does it, guys? So, should we have a look at the website? Let's do that. Friends now number 40 in the queue. It's considering he was 39 about 10 minutes ago. It doesn't really make much sense, but he's just messaged me to say it's actually 30 and he made a mistake, bless him. Right, okay. So here's the website. And again, I'll put those down here. And this is called uh, Cream Puff Powder. And there are how many shades? One, two, 11 shades. So I did get that bit right. Um, and shall I read the description? I'll do that. Max Factor Cream Puff Powder Compact is a medium to high coverage pressed powder with a flawless matte finish. Yep. I'll go along with all of those brilliant stuff. A very flawless, very, very natural. It's an all-in-one makeup that can perfectly even skin tone for an instantly radiant complexion. Very, very true. Very radiant, very glowy. Um, no, not glowy. What's the word? Um, satiny. Very, very satin. Makes your skin look amazing. Itchy beard. Our iconic puff is now back. Well, it gave me a bit of a nervous breakdown, didn't it? Trying to apply a fat powder foundation with a piece of rubber. <laughs> until you realize oh they're talking about that i thought i thought that the, the you know i thought this was called isn't that called a puff or they're talking about the entire thing i don't really know but i'm um, right carry on get on with it man 
on Kay Wilder killing myself. Oh, okay. Give that quite a lot. The Ultrasoft Premium Applicator allows for smooth and easy application, and you need to have a degree in engineering to work out how to take the to get the blinking thing off or open benefits. Even an instantly radiant skin, totally going to agree with that one, without shadow of doubt. Light reflecting particles give us give a soft, subtle glow. Yep, definitely. You can see that on the end of my nose, can't you? And here, and here, and oh, it's just amazing. Uh, provides skin compatibility, works for all skin types. So my skin, sorry, I should have said at the start, my skin's oily to combat a combination to oily, particularly a little bit more oilier in the summer, although it's basically just normal. So um, I don't, I suppose if you applied it to dry skin without priming, and I never prime my skin, I should have said that at the start as well. If you're going to apply it to dry skin, uh, you know, onto bare skin, then do, do expect it to cling to flakes and stuff like that. I don't think it would glide over them. Um, medium to high coverage with super fine matte finish. Yep, again, totally, totally agreeing. Formula absorbs excess oil. So yeah, and that and the ingredients are talc is number one, then followed by cal calcium carbonate, zinc, DR8, liquid uh, power liquid paraffin, basically, BHA, BHT, sorbitin. I won't rabbit on about those, but basically this is certainly not a silicon-based formulation, which is why we couldn't, you know, soak our, sp our, spen our sponges, <laughs> sponges today. But I have shown you a few tips today, haven't I, in how to to get the most out of a, a, a high coverage powder, although it's not a powder foundation, it's just a pressed powder. So, so today, beautiful ones, we have tracked down Marilyn Monroe's face powder. We've uh, tried two different shades on my skin. Translucent was a little bit too yellow, so the tempting touch was perfect for my skin because I had that lovely pink sort of cool tone to it. We applied it using the puff once I worked out how to use the puff, didn't I? Um, didn't we, I should say? And it, I found the puff gave us a little bit too much cover. It looked a little bit too heavy on my old face, but um. And then we went in with the tempting touch, didn't we? Which was just perfect. So we've made a 78 year old formulation, really modern, really work very well for us. And then I showed you, where's my foundation brush? Right, okay, where's it gone? Sorry about that guys, fell on the floor, typical. Um, and then I went in with my foundation brush, didn't I? And um, I showed you how to apply it to your face, avoiding your nose to give you the most perfect um, natural sort of look. So it, obviously, if you need, leave the end of your nose clear um, or light dusting, it will give you a far more natural look. We also talked about if you've put too much powder on and you haven't got time to to make it, to, to remove it and put less on, then just go in with a, a good amount of water spray and a bottle. Hold it about 10 inches, 12 inches away from your face. Spritz it um re re vigorously i guess is the word and um yeah i also showed you beautiful ones how to make your own temporary um hair colorant to neutralize brassy or yellow tones on white or blonde hair uh, again just mix about one fifth to one a uh, one to one fifth one to five I get it right one to five ratio one of colorant five to conditioner mix them in your hands um, put it onto the any areas which are looking yellowy or brassy leave them for five to ten minutes rinse off and you should have perfectly silver or blonde a white sort of blonde sort of look to your hair nothing to do with foundation or Marilyn Monroe's face powder but you know I'm feeling generous today I'm feeling in the mood to give you beautiful ones as many tips as is humanly pos so my big question is is am I going to endorse this cream puff Max Factors cream puff 78 years later without doubt guys it is gorgeous look at that beautiful stuff absolutely fallen for it. it smells lovely so that's a 10 out of 10 for scent it's not cloying it doesn't make you want to physically hurl um the packaging quite elegant i'd say um the sponge needs a, a, a bible of or a magna carta of instructions just to tell you how to use the thing or maybe i was just being a bit thick today possibly that was possibly what was going on but hey ho um formulation on the skin 20 out of 10 without doubt is it worth 10 pounds i'd say it's worth 50 pounds it is gorgeous guys so if you want a an iconic i would call it an iconic uh, powder which it, it does give you a little bit more coverage in it as a regular press powder but you want to transform your skin from lifeless and dull into glowing and gorgeous then i would certainly recommend this this face powder and i can see now why marilyn loved it so so my gorgeous ones that's it for today if you enjoyed today's review blind review of max factors cream puff in shades translucent and tempting touch was it yeah it was tempting i'm sure it was tempting touch i'll have just have a look it's only over here um yeah tempting touch please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up similarly consider subscribing so that you and hit the notifications button to all every time i release new videos you'll receive a notification blah 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 and also coming up in the, the the next few days i'm going to be reviewing this which is the elf 
blush pate lum <laughs> reading the french part i'm not french by the way luminous putty blush and this is in shade what shade is this uh bermuda and this is for me i'm going to be using this because ever since i did the audi um you know i put that halo one thing or the, what was it called glamour one something like that which had a, a bit of color in it um it is amazing sorry my friends just messaged me so there are no bloody appointments left seething and i'm also i also treated myself to this one which is the um, maybelline arrays multi-use concealer so i'll be reviewing those two over the next coming day uh, uh, over the next upcoming days all right guys i hope you have a wonderful wednesday have a beautiful week and i'll see you all very very soon thanks for watching